Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Let's Play of Imperium Maledictum by Cubicle 7. Um, we're joined by Podrick, who's going to be running us through this uh, different take on the world of the 41st millennium. Uh, we're not screaming heroes, kicking down doors and busting <laughs> open space hulks this time. We are or the... Orcs, as we were in the last in their Let's yeah. Play as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are the minutia, the, the cogs that keep the great wheels spinning. Yeah. Uh, they could still be screaming. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it is the grim dark after all. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. so uh, as opposed to Wrath and Glory, this is a different uh, system, Padraig. Then, yeah, that's it. So, thanks for having me on. Anyway, um, this is actually the first playtest that any for anyone from inside the team has done with anyone outside the team. We've oh, had cool. external playtesters, um, but they've mostly been GMing themselves. So, delighted to be yeah. playing it for somebody else. Um, yeah, so Imperium Maledictum is a different system to um, to Wrath and Glory. Uh, it's a little closer to um, more of a fantasy roleplay fourth edition, which we to take some design cues from, um, and even one or two little bits we've borrowed from um, Age of Singer Soulbound. Uh, so we're trying to create a certain type of vibe that's along, like despite happening in the same galaxy as um, Wrath and Glory, is quite quite different, and uh, probably a little bit more woofer, maybe, which will appeal to some. It appeals mm -hmm. to me. Um, so yeah, looking forward to seeing how, how it goes. Okay, dokie. So we have three pre-generated characters uh, that you've set us up with quite handily. Um, ben, do you want to tell us all about who you are going to be playing then? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm going to be taking on the role of Helza Scorn. Uh, she is quite the firebrand of the Imperium, as it were. Uh, she comes from the Ecclesiarchy. As you can tell by the books, there's always books involved with the Ecclesiarchy. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, she's out there to tell people what's what and make sure everybody knows that the Emperor is the reason why all of these things are going the right way. And if it's going the wrong way, it's because you don't believe hard enough. Uh, so yeah, that's that's where, that's where I'm going with Scorn. It's <laughs> good to know. Yeah. Uh, and then Justin. Uh, I will be playing uh, Leo Wink Rantz. Uh, so he is a shadow character. Now, he is, let's say, one of those people within the Imperium who you know keeps the gears turning whenever you know things might break down. If if you need a little something, something, he's he's kind of the guy you're gonna you know go to, and you know it might cost you a few solars, but you know he'll he'll make sure you can feed your family, you know, take care of what you need to, you know, if you need a replacement augmentic, I might have one out the back. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, he does come from Persopolis, and he is currently. Well, in this situation, because of a, a rather unfortunate accounting error, shall we say, where uh, let's let's just say there was a very, very, very legitimate business deal going down and someone in accounting really messed up, which kind of left him on the run, uh, you know, having to like flee off planet. And yeah, that that didn't end so well. So, uh, hi, uh, I'm, I'm Wink and I'm here to work. Excellent stuff. And I will be playing... Cassium, Cassium Calibus, who's a young tech priest, a mere 46, uh, has a calculating look in his eye, and I say eye because the other one has been replaced. Um, augmentation is always for the best, and we know this from the great Omnissiah, that uh, flesh is weak, and the best way to go is to replace all of that weakness, to stop anything creeping in and causing doubt, uh, and instead be all that you can be. Uh, I do have a few other augments, the most interesting of which would, would be, be my, my voice augmented, augmented in the <laughs> So Fantastic. I'm working for uh, Talric. Sorry, Talric the Replicator, a Forge Lord of Power and Influence. And uh, I should be doing my best to... Uh, Keep on the street and narrow of the Omnissiah. So that, that's that's been the wrong voices. There we go. That, yeah. that, that is who we're playing. Well, the first house was all a Deathless Mechanicus faction. Players need a voice changer from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jerry, link it below. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we'll do this thing. Right. Uh, so, uh, as I will be flicking between them, you'll hopefully be able to work out who's asking the questions, whether it's me or whether it's uh, Cassius. Um, <laughs> There'll be a subtle hint, I feel. There will be a subtle hint for those <laughs> playing at home. Right, so where are we starting off then, Podrick? So, um, the default setting for Imperium Maledictum is the Macarian Sector. 
Uh, and that's where you find yourselves. Um, someone mentioned Persopolis, um, yes. which is the yeah, that's the the the, cap- the, the capital uh, world. It's the seat of power for Lord uh, Solar Anulis, who uh, or Sejanus, who um, rules over the sector as a whole. But of course, like individual planetary governors have an awful lot of power, and that's nowhere more true than on Forge Worlds, where um, by ancient right and um, agreement with the Imperium. Uh, the Adeptus Mechanicus holds uh, almost total sway. Um, in particular, you all found your ways to Escatex, uh, which is one of the largest and most potent Forge worlds um, in the system, or in the uh, sector, excuse me. Um, and specifically, you're working for Talek the Reticulator, um, who is your patron. So patrons are a big deal in Imperium Maledictum. They're sort of the person in charge who gathered you all together. Um, and in your backstories, you would all know why you're working for Talek the Reticulator, and if we were doing a campaign, um, you guys would have created Talek as one of the first things that you would have done, like choosing boons, and the GM would have chosen liabilities and the like. Um, but Talek is who Talek is. Um, and according to the uh, sort of low-level huzz, uh, buzzing in your Vox speed, which you know will only get louder until you actually uh, attend his call, uh, he wants to speak to you all. He explained to you previously that this was the most efficient way to summon anybody. Just a very loud, annoying now annoyance that got more distressing the longer you ignored his summons. Uh, answer his summons then, post haste. Yeah. Cool. Um, great. Yeah, the three of you find your way to the center. So he's he's a, a forge lord, which means he's not like a planetary um, power, uh, ostensibly anyway. Um, but like rules over a, a fairly substantial um, series of forges or forge chain, perhaps. Um, Talek, you don't know exactly what it controls, but he has at least one large manufactorum. Um, and you're not clear on what it makes. Uh, and nobody is because you've been asked what it makes. Um, but mostly it seems to make large cogitator arrays that never leave the manufactorum. And it's at the very heart of these, um, arrays, uh, a nest, uh, comes to mind that you know you can find Talek. Um, and as you enter his sort of sacred chambers, the smell of various um, holy unguents and oils sort of like getting to your nose, um, you see him sort of extract himself from the array. Um, he's taken uh, augmetics um, and sort of the weakness of flesh has been carved away uh, very um, potently from Talek. Um, and he literally extracts himself from the cogitator array uh, it, it's almost vulgar to watch as parts of him sort of emerge and, um, you know, reforge. His, his mechadendrites pull out something which looks shockingly like maybe the left hemisphere of his brain reseating it in his head as you enter. Um, and he slowly sort of reassembles himself before you, never fully um, explicating himself from the machinery around him, but slowly a sort of human forge or human form emerges and Talek turns his steely gaze on the three of you. Welcome. That was 14% faster than your last summons. Modest gains are appreciated. My lord. Cassium, it is good to see you again, along with the other biological entities. Before you're gone, make sure to re-sanctify this place to the Omnisaya. Now, I have a need of the three of you. You must go somewhere I cannot deep beneath the forges, in the sump, the very lowest levels. I have ears and eyes. The gangs there have usually been held in a sort of equilibrium, but that equilibrium is threatened. I have run a great many analyses on it, and my cogitators tell me, beyond a doubt, with a very high confidence level, that war is approaching. A small one, yes, between the gangs below, as one of them attempts to ascend to a place of prominence, but still one that will impact efficiencies, still one that will reduce our output, displease the Omnisaya. The outcome is inevitable. One of them will win. Therefore, I would have you go down and balance the equation a little more quickly, interview them, determine which will best serve my needs, or should I say the needs of Escutax at large, the needs of the Cult Mechanicus, and ensure a swift victory for them. Pick a winner, as it were, and then ensure they win quickly. Perhaps a little sabotage, perhaps a little assassination, 
do not draw my name into it. But otherwise you are free to do as you will. I care only for the ends. Do not concern me with the means. Uh, is there perhaps a contact we might have for each of these factions? That is the sort of thing I would expect you to discover yourself. I'm uh, sure you know I'm... plenty of undesirables, Wink. Look, I have legitimate business partners, and I'm doing this to ensure I get one more day while not being a servitor. Yeah. Um, in fact, you probably do know some people down there, and if you want to make a, a lore test, you can go ahead. Uh, so yeah. I am as a D100 game. You roll a D100, and you're trying to get underneath your lore. Um, yeah. the, roll, the test is average, so you can add plus 20 to your skill. Okay, so I am looking at under 45, and for this, uh, because I am a wheeler dealer, I brought in some lovely shiny uh, dicey dice for myself. <laughs> Very nice. Why not? All right, 45. I think you, you need, Wink needs a bit of bling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that will be a 24, or sorry, 27. Cool. So that's 2SL, which is, is a decent success. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if he's talking about where you're thinking of down in the sump, you could you could name uh, at least sort of like you you could probably name the three major players and you, you might have contacts with one of them which I'll let you decide who that is when I tell you about them. But uh, probably the area of the sump that he's talking about, you've got the boilers down there who are one of the sort of gangs that run the um, not extraction but like refining and mm-hmm. um, uh, transport network, um, and they they the laborers and they've been known in the past to call the occasional strike which is usually brutally suppressed but does impact Mm -hmm. Um, then there's House Brandt who are down there House in sort of inverted commas they claim some sort of like noble connection from before um, Lord Soder Macarius uh, sort of conquered and uh, brought into the Imperium the whole sector Um, Mm -hmm. and he he claims to be nobility from before that time but of course it's very quick to bend the knee to the Imperium and that should be recognised but it never has been, to your knowledge. Um, and then the other one that you're kind of like, this isn't really a gang, but there are a group down there who call themselves the Eyeless Horde, um, who gouge out their eyes for some reason. And you're very unclear of the details. You've possibly tried to sell them some augmented replacements in the past. No takers. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, I mean, honestly, if if they're not takers, I don't think I've had much dealings with them. So I think uh, for the first faction, that's probably going to be, I've got two contacts here listed, so... Uh, the first one would be uh, Bracknor the Slab, and the second faction I'm going to say will be Luke Ten Thumbs. So well, that, that's your. Two, those are actually two contacts you already know down there oh, and okay. have dealings with. So Bracknor, okay. you know, there's a minus three after his name. Yeah, I'm guessing Bracknor you don't like is, me. N- no, it's it's more that he considers you an impediment to his business um, oh. and would like you gone. And um, whereas Luke Ten Thumbs, uh, you have a reasonable relationship with him. Plus one. Okay. Okay. So y- you have a, a faction relationship. With, Okay. of uh, infractionists, um, which is like criminals and so on, people who yeah. have a lot of infractions in their name, of plus one, which means, you know, you know people and you know how to deal with them and you get plus one SL to tests involving okay. them. Um, where and, and specifically Locke then is an additional plus one because you know him personally. Okay. Uh, and Banker is a minus three. And if you collect enough sort of plus ones there, you have positive details, dealings with enough people, you can turn your overall relationship with infractions up to plus two. Oh, um, okay. So they're just small little sort of creating these webs of connections okay. and so on that we're trying to do in IM. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, yeah. No, but so you you would know someone from the boilers from uh House Brandt or from the Eyeless Horde um okay. uh, at your choice. So uh you tell me which it is. Sounded like the boiler the broilers or boilers or house brandt, probably. Uh let's go with House Brandt. Yeah, so you would you would know um Tantor Brandt directly, who is is the youngest scion of the family. He probably would claim not to know you, but you, you've um, you had dealings with him once or twice. Okay. Sorry, he has a yeah, got he's a, down. Not totally fine. He has a lot of soldiers, but he doesn't generally have the the writs to, you know, actually get things from uh, Imperium cont- control sort of manufactorum. So he's dealing with a lot of people like you to get what he wants. Got it. If there's nothing else, my lord, we should best move on swiftly to expedite your plans. That would be best. I must return to my calculations. Always they spin and spiral, fractals within fractals. Do you see, Cassim? As he's talking to you, part of his face sort of like splits away, and a mechadendrite slowly lifts it up and places it back inside the machine. I do see indeed. I'm bowing. 
I start to make my way back out. And as I make yeah. my way out, I open a pouch at my waist, take out some oils and start to bless and sanctify the area. Um, if, if that pleases Talek, the others out. he doesn't show it, but he doesn't do anything terrible or horrible to you either. He, he did tell me to, and I'm not about to go against him. As, so, as, uh, if you were to, if you were to mention <coughs> following Cassium, is scorn and every time he does a little incantation or thing scorn sort of mutters under her breath some thing to the emperor or something like that and he's trying to counteract this foolishness (laughs) uh wink is literally just going to throw on seek me a smile do a little bye and just turn and scamper out as quick as he can because he does not want to a servitor ever (laughs) no um, you can, your eye can't help but be drawn to the servitors that like work um, on several devices around you as you go, and like you have this horrible feeling as you pass the last one, the sort of freshest one, that you recognise him from somewhere. <laughs> and yeah, okay, I might, I might, I did it. <laughs> Great, Yeet. perfect. Right. Yeah. Uh, so when the doors have closed, turn to my compatriots. We'll, we'll need to make our way to the sub as quickly as possible. What, what is, is the best way, way to travel there? I've not been out of this temple to be on the side in some time. Um, most likely... Do you have some knowledge of the area, Wink? I mean, I assume I would, because I have... You had 2SL in your earlier test, and you've been up and down. Yeah, you, you know, like, there's there's the official way, which you don't often take, but you know is quick, Um, which is a there's a, a mag lift that goes up and down. Labourers do go up and down from the sump to work in the manufactorums from, you know, d- daily, essentially. Um, but you also know a few longer sort of back alleyways through old service elevators and so on, if you need to get up and down quietly, which sometimes you do. Yeah, um, I'm going to turn to the other two and go, well, seeing as we, we don't want to be really recognised going down in, uh, let's 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 take the the longer way because uh, well, let's just say we don't want too many eyes on us if we're we're doing something for the big boss. Sounds amenable wise, to me. Yeah. Wise precaution. Yes. Mm, that and, and, and uh, <laughs> you know there are probably areas along the way that you haven't sanctified in a long time. Any opportunity to sanctify Don't things so. in the name of the emperor? Yeah. Me, sire. <laughs> the emperor. Cassium. <laughs> he is one over all. <laughs> God and the machine will keep you safe. I'll, we'll get back to this later. I, 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 I would say that's just a small slice of what you experience for the next four hours <laughs> as you make your way down through the uh, the service ducts and, and back alleys and um, uh, sort of like access ways down to the sump, which is you know, hundreds of meters um, or yards for listeners who prefer that uh, beneath uh, the manufactorums above. Um, you, Cassium, would have like a rough plan in your head of what this part of Eshkatax is like. Um, and specifically, there was huge um, support sunk into the bedrock, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, hundreds of years ago or possibly thousands, some of them. Um, Eshkatax was, was a, a world that was given over to the um, Adeptus Mechanicus during uh, the the uh, Macarian Crusades, and um, but before that, it had like supported a fairly high tech sort of civilization. It just wasn't an imperial technology, and um, so there are still bits and pieces down there sometimes that like get unearthed that are a curiosity. Um, but they sunk these huge supports right into the bedrock and built all of the uh, manufactorum on top of it. To, you know, just because the m- massive weight of gigatons of steel would have sunk um, everything down into the the, the soil, if not. Uh, so you're actually like spiraling down one of these supports right now. Um, And the sump is the uh, lovely name given to the area where every imaginable form of industrial runoff and effluent collects and slowly, ever so slowly drains away, meaning that there are large pools and acidic lakes and the like down here around which squat um, tens of thousands of hovels that uh, laborers sort of make their lives in. Um, As we're traveling, uh, there's actually one of my talents that I would like to trigger. Yeah. Uh, which is, I'm not sure if this works or not, but well prepared. So once permission, I can find any one piece of encumbrance zero equipment. So I'm I'm hoping that as we're traveling, I maybe have like a little stash of equipment that I can maybe grab something oh, useful yeah. out of. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, so you've been up down these tunnels a lot. Yeah, there's one that you do. What are, what are you looking for? Um, honestly, I'm hoping for like maybe just a grenade, a smoke or a frag. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'd say you'd find a fragmentation grenade, no problem. One shoved cool. in there. Um, 
yeah, you, from the it's markings just, on it, you can tell like, it's hundreds of years old, possibly issued to soldiers who fought the McCarran Crusade that's been knocking around on here for a long time. That's fine. If yeah. we need to use it, we have it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lucky grenade, as it were. Uh, that's fine. Um, you find your way down into uh, emerging into something more or less as I described there, huge lakes of acid and acidic runoff, um, alkaline runoff, which is a, a distinction without a difference from the, the point of view of actually falling into it. It would be just as horrific. Um, but there's also a sort of a bustle of life down here that there isn't so much above, um, you know, where people quietly move around trying not to gain the attention of any tech priests um, using electus to silently access different areas of the manufactorum and the only sound is really the grind and crunch of machinery but down here it's different you can actually hear people um talking murmuring laughing crying despairing worshiping uh all around you um and you emerge out from one of the secret access ways possibly shoving back um some sheets of uh pl like fake plascrete behind you um plasteel as you come out into the into the sump proper mm -hmm. What are you trying to find? Where are you trying to go? Well, presumably, as we made our way down, um, Wink will have been filling us in on his contact in House Brandt. Yeah, uh, so, well, it's the contact in House Brandt, and also I would be filling you in on uh, Luke Ten Th Thumbs and Baraknor the Slab, or Brancor the Slab. Uh, just, okay, this one I'm friendly with, this one I'm not watch out he trust me you cannot miss him he is a slab yeah you, you one of those cases of nominative determinism uh where yeah. his parents <laughs> named him yeah. and he just grew into yeah. it um yeah um, so we come out uh i'm gonna suggest we maybe find like a, a local sump bar uh, i know some of my contacts maybe sometimes frequent um, you know that Loch Tentums can usually be found at um, a bar called Recyc Thirteen. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to suggest let's let's go over a word with my buddy, see if see if he's heard anything because normally he's he's pretty good at hearing whenever things are about to go sideways. It has came in really handy a couple of times. He saved my skin. What you've told us of your contacts down here, Wink. This Tantor Brandt sounds like the most amenable fellow, someone noble, perhaps a good bearing. Oh, did 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 did. My little buddy first. Then we'll, then we'll talk to Brandt, because sometimes he lies. Hmm. A liar. Yes. I'm well, I, I well know them. <laughs> Grant. Um, <laughs> no problem. You make your way to Recyc 13. Something I should point out is that Cassium does attract a reasonable amount of attention, um, because normally when tech priests come down here, it's to repair something vital, and they're surrounded by a Skitari maniple who are none too shy about... Um, Keeping people at distance. Yeah, pretty yeah. much melting people who get too close. Um, so you're, you're getting some attention. Gingerly holding my robe up so I don't drag it through too many pools of whatever <laughs> gank this is on the floor. Uh, hey, Kirk, Sending an intimidating in, message and image. Ancient <laughs> engine oil or something. <laughs> oh, the oil I'm not worried about. It's the pools of alchemical waste that look like they're uh, starting <laughs> to make the corner of your boot smoke. Oh. Yeah, it is recommended you don't stand in one place too long. So, mm. uh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, the attention doesn't turn into anything uh, yet. You make your way to Recyc 13, uh, which is a small sort of hovel of a, a drinking hole named for the uh, branding or sort of like large letters printed on the side of the um, uh, pipe that it has tapped to uh, extract whatever it is they serve here as a sort of a, a, a drink. Um, you, you've been told, uh, Wink, that it's it's heavily refined at the be through the best um, sort of tech priest blessed machinery before it serves anybody. Um, but you have also seen some of the staff just like filling buckets from the street when the uh, pipe is occasionally turned off. I mean, I, mean, I, I do have my favourite from the establishment, you know, old fuel barrel number seven. Yeah, it's a, it's a good vintage. They don't make any more number seven. <laughs> uh, St Scorn is going to look at the door and the abode in with Scorn. <laughs> uh, and just be like, you go in and do your thing, Wink. I will stay here and watch the door. Good idea. <laughs> I'll just quickly jimmy on in. Where does Cassian go? Oh, I'll follow Wink inside. I'll then be paying close attention to how exactly they've typed in or tapped into the pipework. <laughs> um, blasphemously, is the first thing you would say. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks like you just cut in here and put a siphon in. Um, you can almost hear the machine spirits uh, of, of the small pumps they've used moan and complain about their treatment. And you can see a half dozen ways that you could improve upon this more or less <laughs> as, immediately. As, as they as they start to go in, Scorn turns around before they do and says, and no drinking, wink. <laughs> no, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Anyone knows you need to grease the wheels of any good machine to keep the Imperium turning. And so I need to grease up my friend to keep the wheels of the Imperium turning. That's fine. It would be, you know, it may well look suspicious if you didn't have a drink, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps. So uh, yeah. we'll go in. I'll saunter up to the bar. I'll see if I see my friend order basically my favorite drink for me and a small cup of sanctified oil for this one. They look at me as you. Sanctified oil, is it? Uh... Yes, yes, definitely a sanctified. Give it to him. <laughs> pulls out a small bottle of oil that they've probably been using to maintain some of the pumps um, and gives you your usual. Uh, and indeed, uh, you do notice as you're ordering that Lock Tentums is over in the corner. It looks like he's concluding um, mm. some some kind of deal with somebody else. There's a lot of yeah. shaky of hands, spitting and the like. Um, yeah. uh, I'll nod to the barkeep and say, and one more of whatever he's having, send it down. Yeah. Just he, quite an easy way to get his attention. Yeah, he nods at you. Um, Six orders for the lot, he says. Mm -hmm. So pay the man. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, no problem. And Cassie, are you following or are you going to attend to the machine spirits of the pumps or are you going to just keep it? <laughs> what is this they have given me? It's a sanctified oil, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just put it back on the bar and walk over to the pipework <laughs> and uh, stop blessing it because it's been through a lot. <laughs> that's fine you busy yourself there that's grand um, Locke is happy for the drink and you sit down with him and I'll get back to you in a moment um, meanwhile uh, Scorn you're outside um, when yes. you, you realise a small crowd is gathering across the uh, the street from you and someone has stepped on top of like it looks like a, a piece of discarded manufactorum uh, or munitorum uh, crates um, and you can see from the look of them straight away that like their one of their eyes is missing, and the other and, and the other one has like scrapes around it, as though someone perhaps tried to gouge it out and then stopped. Um, that was was forced off uh, by a, a woman who's climbing up on top of it. She looks around with her one um, good eye at the crowd that's gathering um, and says, "Come, come and hear, come and hear the word of the emperor. Yes, gather round, all of you." The emperor is looking. His light shines on us all. It is only these eyes we have that see only the material world. They blind us to his light, but it falls on us all, even in this place. Intrigued. Scorn will go over and, and listen to more of what they have to say. Yeah. Sort of do make our way know, into the crowd. Do you know where Terra is? I do. And she looks like very directly over one particular direction. I can see it from here. Because I have gouged out the eye, the sinful eye, that could only see this world. And now the Emperor's light falls on me. The same could be true of you. It is not a blindness. It is seeing for the first time, seeing truly the visage, the light, the glory of the God Emperor. Have you seen it? She points at somebody and they kind of like look awkward and get moving again. And she points at someone else. What of you? And they sort of nod. And then she points at you. And you, have you seen the Emperor's light? The Emperor's light is always on me, cretin. Yes, 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 we know that, but have you seen it? I have often seen the Emperor's light. I've even been blessed in it. Uh -huh. You have not, for you still have eyes that are filled with the, the filth and the dirt and the grime, the struggle of this place. Were you to pluck them out, you would see. Under her breath, she says, and you have befound your bodies. <laughs> and then she says, where might I uh, inquire with those higher in station amongst your cult? Oh, will you wish to sit before Delos, before Delos the Iron be judged? Yes, Delos. Where does he dwell? She holds her place, her seat beneath the 14th strut and she points off in the distance at this huge strut which vanishes up into like the smog and the reek of this place before you could see what it possibly supports um, with a large number 14 on it. And there she holds court. There she looks and preaches and tells us the truth of the emperor. 
Thank you for your information. And now an education. And then Scorn is going to turn around to the crowd and start extolling the virtues of the Emperor through the sacred books and the icons that she has in as much with as much enthusiasm as possible. Oh, very good. Um, are you kind of like leaning into sort of lower theology to convince these people? Yes. Or are you going, OK, that's oh, fine, yeah? Yes, I'm trying to like enforce these rules back in these people rather than this strange eyeless being yeah so, you yes. win them over as opposed to just kind of have a presence and yes. be charismatic yeah. yeah that's that's fine cool go for it roll i think it's challenging at least because these which means it's just a straight roll no yeah bonuses. yeah so that'll be a 35 yeah oh 16 so that's two degrees of success there we go yeah, yeah. A, a few people do sort of like start listening to you a little bit more as you stick to what i, I assume is a fairly sort of orthodox Ecclesiarchy. Yes, it feels like starting with the basics is probably the best way to start with these people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have noticed a lot of people here, like the Omnisci is an aspect of the Emperor, um, or the Emperor is an aspect of the Omnisci, depending on who you ask. Uh, but if you talk to someone in the Imperial cult, of course, they will tell you that the, uh, the the tech priests and the cult mechanicus are just somewhat confused about their in their worship of the God Emperor. So mm -hmm. people here are, haven't heard some of the truths you have to share with them, uh, and they seem quite intrigued. Uh, perhaps entirely based on the fact that you're not asking them to gouge out their own eyes exactly yeah, um, yeah that yeah. seems to go over well I, I i i attempt to do it at exactly the same time that this poor unfortunate starts to try and speak i speak louder than them as much as possible yeah. <laughs> to drown they, them they, out <laughs> they don't they don't like it yeah. and eventually move on i i think yeah. you might have a bit of equipment for that <laughs> have you loud hailer yeah you? my yeah <laughs> I've also got the so I've got the faithful talent as well, which is once per mm -hmm. session I can add. So I could potentially have added my willpower bonus to that as well if I wanted to. You could because it was about faith, but obviously I might keep that, that for something. That's, it, well, it's anything thing. that your fate might help you with. So Ooh, if you yeah. needed to so push someone on, down, yes, like it could as well if it was in the emperor's name. Yeah. Mm, very cool. I'll which I, I assume you find a reason why everything you do is in the emperor's exactly. name. Exactly. <laughs> often a path taken. Yeah. Um, that's that's absolutely fine. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, between loud hailer and um, your your more orthodox sort of take, yeah, you, you get a small crowd gathers around you and, and listens in the uh, few minutes they have between home and sustenance and work, and um, they they spend it on you. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, back inside, um, Resect thirteen. Uh, you're sitting in front of uh, Lock Tentums. Um, his you know whose gloved hands sort of sit on the table in front of you as he eyes up the drink you got from. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Always good to see you wink, especially with a drink in your hand. Oh, and he gives you a big wink, which is his sort of like, yeah, yeah. we're we're buddies. This is a thing we share sort of greeting um, that you have you haven't tried to spread. Yeah. Um, but um, Well, as as I sit down, I'm going to turn to you and go, uh, look, look, my friend, um, I've been hearing there's maybe a bit of a ruck, you know, or a bit of a fight, a scrap coming up. And, you know, you know me, I always like, like to turn, you know, a bit of a profit here and there. And a good fight's always a good way to turn a bit of a profit. You wouldn't know who it's between, would you? Well, I, I'll put it this way. Depends who's asking. Or rather, it depends where you heard it. Well, you know me, I, I hear things from all through the tunnels. Yeah, yeah. Secret for a secret, though. You want to know something? I want to know something. Where's your information come from? <laughs> oh, you know me, it's... Uh... I really shouldn't say. It's that's exactly why I want to hear it. You know who up there? Does he know who? Have you ever explained who you work for? Uh, I have like suggested that I'm working for someone quite high up within the the mechanicus. That's good enough for Locke. Um, he smiles and uh, he takes off um, one of his gloves to um, reveal the hand you've seen once or twice before. True to name, he does just have ten tums and no fingers. Um, <laughs> He is a, a fairly low grade mutant who usually gets away with it um, or has so far. And he takes up the drink you got from him and shuts, shoots it back. Well, if they're asking up there, then it oh, must yeah. be true. They know something. They have ears and eyes everywhere. You find them sometimes in behind panels and that. Um, and if they're I, asking, it must be happening. Yeah. 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 It true, is true. And as we both know, whenever someone's digging ore, the best things always have to roll from the top of the spoil heap. Ah, and you know what? The other thing about digging ore is people who make money are the ones selling the shovels. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm going digging, so uh, what's the shovel going to cost? Ah, you already have the stuff you need, don't you? I'm thinking of getting a couple of crates in. Maybe something could fall off the back of a departmental munitorum shipment. Yeah, something like that. Again, it, it's, it's, it's knowing where you send it, you know. 
Who, who are the players? Who are the players? Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah. Well, trade for trade. So, Brandt, he's finished that cathedral <laughs> cathedral he built down here, uh, and he's got nothing left. Coffers are dry, apparently. He's trying to drum up solars anywhere he can, and he's starting to look at taking over the Promethean business from the boilers. The boilers, well, uh, they went hacking through some of the pipes recently, cut the wrong one. Yeah, not full of Promethean, but some some gas. Real, real brutal stuff. Took out a lot of them. A real mess. They're all coughing up their lungs over there. So they're not as strong as they used to be, which means Brandt might have a shot at them. And then there's these guys, the Eyeless Horde. Have you heard about them? Mm. Always yeah. preaching. Oh, Always don't tell preaching. me that. Don't tell me this is going to be a three way brawl. I hate those. It's going to be something, all right. Well, apparently they're uh, a little better back than anyone would have thought. No one knows where it's coming from, but they've got some good, good stuff. Mm. There See. was a brawl the other night between uh, some ecclesiarchy missionaries and a couple of the Eyeless Horde. One of them pulled out a bolt pistol, smeared the group all over a back of a, well, I don't know what it was. Where'd you get a bolt pistol down here? What a good question, isn't it? Where'd you get the ammunition for it? I've seen a few empty cases sometimes. People keep them as relics, but I've never even even seen a real bolt. I don't know. I've, I've sold them as charms a few times, but to get a live one and with a gun to fire it? Woof. Well, this fella had one. Oh. Craziest thing too. Both of his eyes out, completely blind. He hit that preacher square in the head. Well, that 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 doesn't sound good. That's no that's the ecclesiarchal territory right there. Not much of the ecclesiarchy on uh Eschatax now, as you well know. Yeah, that, that might be the problem. Might be the problem. You know, last thing I want to see is the black ships coming down. He makes the sign of the emperor. It's like, oh, Emperor, protect us from those. Mm. Um, and then he looks a bit like awkwardly, puts back on the glove. Um, the black ship's mostly concerned with psychers, but people just know they take people. <laughs> you know, that's, yeah. you know, yeah. people who are different get taken and he doesn't yeah. like it. Um, well, I think, I don't really know if there's anything more I need to ask this guy. So I'll, I'll, I'll give him a wink and a nod and toss a couple of solars on the table and go on, that's for the next round. Yeah, he just, um yeah, for a man with ten tomes, he nimbly disappears the soldiers. Again, it, it's it's you know, keep him sweet. Keep him sweet. I might need him again sometime for a, another little bit of info. Yeah, very true. You know, all right. So I will go across and tap the tech priest and go, um, we we kind of need to to get moving here. Surely this is an inefficient use of your of your time for the task we've been given. To break this ritual is to break this faith. And, and to, yet, to to put your talents onto such a lowly machine, surely there is greater rituals that you must work on further on down with the the mission that we've been given. All machines are made for a reason. There's no such thing as a lowly machine. Uh, right, I'm going back to the bar for another round while he finishes up. <laughs> Roll your uh, tech engineering there. I'll see how Cassium gets on. Survey says that's 61. That's not going to be a pass. No, the, no, the, the te text 55. Yeah, the spirits of these machines have just been absolutely mangled um, over the years. The best thing you could probably do is euthanize them at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you make a couple of minor improvements, but as soon as you close one thing, like everyone starts leaking out of another one, and the bartenders are all like, they would not tell a tech priest to stop doing something like this but they want to, you can see. <laughs> After uh, I realize I'm not going to be able to fix this poor rusted soul, uh, I'll motion to wink and head back outside to our comrade. I'll, I'll knack it and just follow out. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Yeah, you, you down it, it burns all the way down and uh, from experience it won't stop there, but you make your way back outside. Um, yeah, where you see Hells out a small group around her, um, aptly listening to words of the Emperor's glorious victory over um, pretty much everybody. Why did we leave the fanatic alone? Now go forth and spread your word of the Emperor to all around. And oh. then she'll step off her box and walk over to the uh, <laughs> the box that she took off the... Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> going to say. Where did the you go? weirdo, yeah. Yeah. I hope your uh, communing with the others was good. I have found out some more information as well that may be of use. Mm -hmm. These, this eyeless horde, these strange fanatics, 
They're led by someone called Delos, as far as I'm aware, and they dwell down by the 14th strat. And I'll point off in that direction. Were you able to find out more about our uh, potential allies? Uh, yeah, so from the sound of it, we've got three major players that we're going to have to worry about. And the ones that you've been riling up a little bit don't like the ecclesiarchy, and they're carrying bolt weaponry. So maybe tone it down just a little. They are utterly mad. <laughs> we, I doubt we will be allying with them. And he'll, she'll spit on the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I mean, from, from what I hear, House Barant is trying to expand. Uh, and the boilers aren't doing so good. But I don't know where they are. But we could go talk to House Brandt. You know, maybe find out a little more info. See who we're going to back in this. Comprehension I, is the key to all things. Hmm. I mean, I, I already know Brandt, he's kind of an okay guy. He likes just a little bit of skooma, but that, he's okay. I suppose we could go and talk to this Brandt then. It will solidify my opinion that this eyeless horde are a bunch of worthless, faithless fiends. <laughs> Absolutely fine. Um, it's quite <laughs> easy to wake your way to Brandt's um, cathedral, which is where he tends to be most of the time these days. Perfect. Um, because it is, it, it is the only large um, gold gilded building in the midst of like these hovels and pits of acid and the like that make up um, the sun. Uh, and you can already see where like, Acidic drops have sort of like condensed onto um, the roof and are already staining um, the gold sheets. It's very interesting, multi hued colors. Um, as you approach the cathedral, uh, you hear a crack of um, Laz fire and a figure um, you hadn't really noticed uh, that was on the roof um, near, like, looked to be like kind of holding on to some sort of like gold encrusted gargoyle, um, stiffens and falls. Um, off the roof and onto the the ground in front of the cathedral. Uh, and as you approach, a small work team in like house brand um, colors, which is purple with some kind of like Terran antlered creature on a crest, uh, approach the body, um, throw a tarp over it and drag it off um, to one side. And a little while later, you see them shoving it into one of the acid pits with some sticks. Okay. Well, welcome to the sum, to folks. The this this is where I work. Cathedral. Sorry, what, Jerry? No. It doesn't pay to disrupt the cathedral. Well, when someone know. can build that, you, yeah, best best left alone unless you kind of know them. Perish, you might, you uh, should best make introductions then, Wink. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to see if there's maybe any guards or like staff out front that I can speak to and like ask for an audience with Brant, yeah. Lord uh, Brant. Uh, a great deal of guards, most of them armed with like a couple of malls and some and the like, uh, a few with auto pistols um, on their belt. Mm. Um, um, yeah, one oh. of them uh, near the door, um, sort of, you think you recognize him um, from previous uh, meetings with uh, Brandt. Uh, they'll basically just saunter up confidently with the other two behind me in tow and just go, how's it going? I um, uh, need to have a word with Brandt today. Um, got a little bit of work and I think I might be able to help him out. You seek an audience with Lord Trantor Brandt? Oh, yes, yes, I've done business with him before. Don't you recognize me? I was here last week. I doubt my Lord Brandt would have any business with one such as yourself, especially not if you keep talking so bloody loud. I'm just going to look at him and maybe slip out maybe five solars and just you know try and palm them off going, look, I need a word with a man. Can you help me out here? He points at a large box um, that says donations in low gothic and underneath in the word um, mandatory if you wish to enter the cathedral lord brandt is inside a donation of 50 solars will get you access to the cathedral or a hundred to access the private boxes that's how our funds looking right now um you probably all would have started with about 300 solars to your, to your name more or less okay um what are we thinking folks private boxes or just mean cathedral Scorn will, uh, what was it? How much was it for the private boxes and stuff? And 100. Will, 100. Scorn will take 100 out and she'll put it in and she'll put for the faithful and she'll drop it into the box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It lands in. The gentleman nods at you. Um, he takes a small, sort of like golden seal with the house, uh, the house brand um, antlers creature of some kind uh, on it and sort of like pins that to your clothing. Of course, enter. 
I'll just shake my head and do the same. Yeah, he does the same with you, but when he sticks the pin in, he really sticks it in. <laughs> I, I tried to donate to him. That's all I'm going to say here. I'll I'll follow the uh, the other two up and also put a donation of 100 solar in. Yeah, he Staring holds up the pin, but it's like you can see he's struggling with the thought of touching, and he's so relieved when you take it. Um, <laughs> Life is the spark of life and spirit. Life is directed motion. Attached to myself and wander through. Uh, he he barely manages a nod and a yes, my lord, as you uh, deliver that. Um, and you, the three of you pass inside the cathedral. Um, it's 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 impressive if, unlike Score, you you, you uh, didn't grow up on a shrine world. Um, this to you, Scorn is like a small sort of temple that would have been on the end of one of the great streets of temples um, on Macaria. Um, but here, it, it's it's still familiar, maybe even a bit comforting, because you haven't been in such a place in, in, in some months at least. Um, and so it, it's it's a relief to to be here, perhaps for you. The incense um, smells correct, the orthodox uh, sort of burning of, of, of uh, the great right type of insects and the like, uh, incense and the like. But the cathedral is otherwise almost entirely empty. Feels like we're missing a congregation. Mm. Pews for thousands, a massive golden statue of the emperor, um, a similar smaller statue of Lord Solar Macarius off to one side. Um, very all very orthodox, all very, very correct, as you understand. Just, but uh, uh, missing a congregation indeed. I'm just gonna look at Scorn and go, 50 solars to come in the door. These people aren't that rich. Maybe we shall have a word with Brandt about letting in some of those outside. But anyway, first to the beginning business. You must find out his actual strength. Uh, just after you say, Lord Branch, um, you notice a, a, a sort of a humming nearby and a small servo skull descends from the darkness in the rafters above and settles next to you. Um, and then in a, a, a Vox voice that I don't have a good voice changer to do, <laughs> says, did you know that Lord Trantor Brandt's family was one of the first to bend the knee to the Imperium and surrendered to Lord Solar Macarius personally? What an exciting kick bit. <laughs> Just waiting to hear that one of his family was sainted. I'll begin Did you walking, know that Lord walking. Trantor Brandt's great-great-grandmother was martyred for her fate to the Imperium? <laughs> I will begin walking up through the, the cloisters to try and see if I can figure out where Brandt is in here. Yeah, so yeah, I'll follow. I'll keep watching if the servitor keeps following it's, it. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the sort of a version yeah. of a pop-up ad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does indeed keep following you. It seems to have centered on you, and it just keeps continually telling you facts about... Cassia, um, Cassius, can you make this thing disappear? I, I'll turn towards it and uh, explain. We, we don't require it right now, but we require... Lord, Lord Brandt. Brandt. Fetch us, Lord, Lord Brandt. Brandt. You, um, yeah, make a, uh, oh, yeah, you interface with it. I think the, the voice changer works really well on me as a GM. I'm just like, oh, I can't argue with this. I can't ask for dice rolls. Of course, the yes. service. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, you, you, you interface with the service skull briefly to grant it new orders. And the first thing you, you notice is that there's a, it's a fairly paltry attempt and you overcome it very easily. This servitor, or this servo skull has been um, purloined and repurposed with uh, illegitimate code, unapproved code, um, to spout this uh, stuff about uh, Lord Tantor Brandt. It, it's a trivial matter for you to repurpose it, um, but certainly this hasn't been approved. Oh, you got a pet. Uh, I don't want a pet. I, I will just repurpose it and send it, send it to find Lord Brandt. And uh, we have a private box, correct? Yeah, uh, yes, yes. So are they numbered or are, is it just a case of go and find one or? They're mostly empty. It does seem to be yeah. a case of going to find one. They're like up, raised up, um, you know, sort of balconies overlooking um, the, the I'll, uh, cathedral. I'll pick the one closest to the altar on the right. And uh, tell, tell Lord Brandt, Brandt we, we can, can be found in the box on, on the right, right of the altar. altar. And then yeah. send it on its way. So you summon him. Oh, yes. <laughs> I All will right. follow the cogboy. Yeah, no problem. Um, 
you uh, do that, and a short while later, as you settle yourself in, uh, a, a person, a fairly senior-looking guard, lots of like sort of gold stripes on his epaulets, uh, arrives wearing the colours of House Brand and says, Lord Brand will see you. Uh, he is not summoned by uh, anyone, even your good self, my lord. But he will see you. Now, he is in uh, a box just a few uh, steps this way, if you'd like to follow me. Very good. Jason. Lead on. As we'd, sat, uh, as we'd sat down and we had a couple of minutes to like wait before this guy came, Scorn has written like a series of like um, pointers for this guard about the introduction of the uh, congregation to the area. Yeah. And she hands it to him. She says, this should be taken under advisement. Uh, I will treat it with all the respect it deserves. He says, and he folds it in half and shoves it in a pocket. <laughs> well, during our little... Um... Brief waiting period, shall we say, where we've exchanged the information that was garnered earlier. Yeah. Just so that everybody's on the same page, we know the Eyeless Horde is the biggest of the three factions. Yes, yeah. Best armed, best equipped. Best armed, best equipped, and possibly the most heretical, I'm going to say. Uh, Something was going around in Scorn's mind, anyway. I mean, most likely to get me turned into a servitor, so yeah. <laughs> well, uh, so obviously, if we're going to be throwing our power behind Brant, uh, we can't be overt in it. Are we going to suggest that we form an alliance with the boilers and Brant? So, but rather than just go in in front of him and start having this massive conversation, because I don't want to do that. Right? Well, the 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 key thing is we know that they are the the best equipped, so there is. Definitely money behind them that if we take them out, we can sort of funnel his way, their way, and my way. Yeah, but but it's so the, I'm, how I'm, do we I'm get to the plan. taking them out part? If they're the biggest and most well equipped, the three of us aren't going to take down a whole gang in part of a war. They've got to be True, set up in some manner. We know where they are, so I'm thinking we have a, a meeting with Brandt to see what he thinks of current threats. Uh, we ask where the boilers are. Because, you know, if we go acting as his emissary to make peace between them, you know, and then between the two, yeah. you know, they've, they've had a massive leak of some rather horrible gas. So that tells me they know the pipe works and we know what extinction uh, the Eyeless are living under. So maybe we could do a little sabotage, gas them out. The fact they gas themselves leads me to believe they do not know the pipe work. Oh, but we have you here. True. We will educate them. Cassium. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's my thinking. If you guys have any yeah, thoughts yeah. of your own. No, 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 that sounds good. We'll do that. It's fine. Yeah. Right. Uh, then the guard arrives. And then we go to the... Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> fine. You're you're brought into... Um, uh, it looks like it was like a, a small box similar to the one you were just in, where all the seats looked down mm-hmm. so that people could listen to the, the preaching and so on. This box has been done out a little differently. It's just a large dining table um, with one or two seats in front. And uh, someone who you take to be Lord Brandt is sitting at one end um, of the table. Uh, it, it's covered in like foods that would be relatively exotic down here, you know, but are like not far above standard fare, up above like the clean type of rations and uh, water with not other chemicals in it um, are laid out in front of him. Um, he is... While a lord, something of a treadbare lord, uh, mm. a member of an aristocracy that to the Imperium no longer exists. Uh, but someone, he, he's gotten some money somewhere, judging by the surrounds. Ah, welcome, welcome. Uh, emissaries from the Cult Mechanicus and uh, Associates. And he gives you a little nod, um, wink. Please take a seat. I'm told you want to speak with me. Um, do you seem to have damaged one of my servo skulls? Oh, no, 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 no. We have a tech priest. We would never damage one of your servo skulls. You merely returned it to factory settings. Mm -hmm. It had been given other purposes. Uh, Not to worry. Sit, sit. (laughs) I'll sit at the table. Yeah. Uh, Take a seat and announce myself, Cassium Calibus, my lord, Brandt. Cassium Callus, not a name I'm familiar with. And I have uh, informed myself as to many of the Forge Lords in this sector. Um, do you, Are you here representing someone else? Uh, uh, my patron does, does not want his name known. But ah, we are indeed sent uh, to see if we can broach a most delicate matter that seems to be 
sump current in the sump currently. Of course, of course. There seems to be some sort of friction. Not Lord Benthic, is it? As I said, I'm not permitted to reveal his name. Surely not Talek. But I, I have, I, I, I simply wish to know who I'm dealing with. But uh, of course, I'll hear you out all the same. But merely add some weight to your words if I knew where they came from. Uh, I'd like to break it at this point and just turn him and go, now, Lord Brandt, we all know that when the words come from on high, there's always the concern that the the population is kept working most efficiently as we are on a forge world. So it really matters not which of the higher-ups wish us to, shall we say, assist in some delicate matters that are going on currently, which is why we're here today. I mean, I wouldn't as expect you... one of your class to understand, but uh, when the great and the good deal with each other as peers, they normally announce themselves. Not to worry, I'll hear you out all the same. Uh, the house, uh, Trantor, House Brandt, always uh, has time to hear from the Code Mechanicus, of course. Of course, of course. And it's it's concerning things that, that we have been hearing, rumblings of disquiet in the local area, shall we say. Uh, we, we see there is a, a, rather, a rather strange blind cult wandering around. And we also hear that uh, some of your rivals are not exactly having the best time of it. However, we have information that might be of value to yourself and perhaps might be able to offer some assistance. Assistance is always welcome. I uh, uh, have had little dealings with the Eyeless Horde, as they style themselves. Uh, fellow faithful, as I understand it. Uh, yes, they can see their way to um, populating this rather grand cathedral to the Emperor, which I have personally paid for the construction of at great expense. Oh, yes, of course. Of course. Um, uh, we have, however, heard a, a rather vicious rumour of them murdering an ecclesiarchal representative with nothing less than a bolt weapon. One of the emperor's most righteous weapons, as I understand it. Uh, mm, well, I, to be I used against a righteous servant? I don't know anything about that. It, it perhaps wouldn't surprise me the way things are down here. Um, it's up to folks, people of note, such as myself, to try and put some order on things down here. If I had a little more support from um, the cult mechanicus, for example, perhaps I could put some order on things down here, end this sort of crime. Uh, and so we come to the crux of the discussion. So as we understand it, you've you've had a slight feud with the, the boilers. We would like to perhaps request that you put this aside and that oh. between the two factions, we perhaps, shall we say, remove the eyeless horde? And, of course, they seem to be quite well equipped from what our information tells us. And, of course, we all know that uh, when things like that happen, there is always spoils to be taken and divided. You're suggesting a violent intervention. Well, first of all, I don't know what sort of funds a group that call themselves something as ridiculous the Eyeless Horde might have to be split among anyone else. If I wanted to deal with them, I could personally. I wouldn't oh. need the help of... The boilers. And I should add that I have no feud with them. They have a feud with me because they're under the mistaken impression that I owe them money um, for various supplies of Prometheum and the like. Um, but I'm quite certain that's a misunderstanding on their part, a misapprehension. Early, early negotiations could be engaged. Well, the last person I sat over, they dipped in Prometheum, threw off a building and set on fire. So negotiation doesn't seem to be open to me. Perhaps you could have a word with them. Course, Which is uh, a silver-tongued individual. I'm sure he could do your good work. We could work as your emissaries, as it were. And, of course, the emissaries of the God Emperor himself. Wouldn't you agree, Scorn? Exactly. And I'll slam my icon down on the ground a little louder. <laughs> I was unaware yeah. your mouth was augmented, Wink. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> From years of training, I have not been blessed by the Omnissiah, but I was blessed by the God Emperor himself. Quite, says Brent. Uh, so what is it exactly you're you're here to do? Yes, tensions are rising. Were I a little better funded, a little more in control, I could keep things in order, I assure you. Very straightforward, very easy. Um, there's profit to be had in it for uh, House Brandt. And of course, if House Brandt were to profit, I'm sure the results would uh, 
make their way down to everybody else. Um, but as I said, the, the boilers don't particularly want to deal with me. Perhaps if there's a change in leadership there. That is why we are here to try and see what we can do to help you, Lord Brandt. And of course, you wouldn't want any unfortunate surprises if it turned out that the eyeless horde, heathens that they are, were indeed armed with such weapons as the Holy Bolter. You would want someone, maybe us, to deal with that situation for you? Oh, a little preemptive action in that regard, yes, would be most welcome, though. Of course, if, if certain guarantees were made, perhaps by a powerful individual in the cult mechanicus who could be named at some point, if guarantees were given, then I could throw the full weight of my own personal security behind any such attempt. Uh, now, Lord Brand, you know how things work down here. A friend of a friend is the best friend. Wink, I'm have. starting to think that you don't know how things work down here. <laughs> the three of you walked in off the street. You tell me you represent someone powerful. There's all sorts of rumours about you, Wink. All sorts. Uh, and the best part is because I work with friends of friends. No one knows which ones are exactly true, which keeps me safe, which could also keep you safe. I'm not happy to be dealing with some unknown partner. If you want my enthusiastic participation in whatever it is you're planning, you'll name them. Surely you could agree to go along with the word of someone so faithful as I, being a faithful individual yourself. You need to lecture me about faith inside the cathedral I practically built with my own two hands, he says as he daintily picks up a small cup of something and drinks it. Puts it back down. With no congregation? Cathedrals, in my view, are somewhat ruined by the congregation. Mm. They dirty (laughs) up the floors. He thinks back to polishing the great statues of (laughs) of the shrine world. Uh, (laughs) As I've said before, my lord, I'm not in a position where I can reveal my patron. Perhaps that may change. However, at the moment, we are only here to see what aid we can offer to try and rectify matters. Issues here will cause issues above. The machine cannot be stopped. The machine must not be slowed. Understanding is the true path to comprehension, my lord. It's understanding I'm asking for. Very well. If you're unwilling to name who you operate for, I will still give you some assistance in this matter, as it serves me ultimately. Very well. Let me know what it is you plan. Let me know that the boilers have been dealt with, or at least stood down to some degree, so I can relax my own um, personal security detail. That will leave me with some uh, people to send your way, perhaps assist in dealing with the Isla's Horde. This this might also be an opportune moment. Uh, you have had dealings with the boilers before. Now, much like yourself, uh, we are basically beginning our our work down here to keep the great machine running. Um, would you perhaps know who among the boilers would be best to speak to and where we might locate them? Hmm. So there's me just trying to build a little rapport with them. Yeah, sure. You'll find them in the heap. Surrounds Strut 11. He's the one that I was dealing with. He's the one under the mistaken um, misapprehension that the Prometheum he sent was not a gift, a donation, which of course it was. I believe that is all we need then, Lord Brandt, for now. We will return with your information and we shall see if our partnership can continue. Indeed. Um, I've given you quite a lot, which is to say my time. So I'll see what you bring me. I would just like to point out before I leave that I left a series of pointers with your, I guess, your number two. See that they are attended to. It may help you in your forward goings on under the Emperor's light. (laughs) A mere suggestion, perhaps. (laughs) A suggestion. Better than uh, what sounded regretfully like an order for a moment. I do not order anyone. I simply follow the Emperor's guidance. Just Just like you do, sir. (laughs) Just so. Well, be on your way. Rise and bow and make our way up. Uh, I will do the same and uh, also say, enjoy the donations as we leave. Yeah, he 
<laughs> nods along. Um, he looks like a man whose problems, you know, 150 soldiers won't fix, but that's fine. <laughs> um, well, no, we, so. we give him three hundo. Yeah. Oh, 300. Yeah, sorry, sorry, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. ration pack number four is on the menu tonight, boys. Yes. <laughs> As we leave. What what a wonderful fellow. Mm. Yeah, just don't turn your back on him. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Mm. Quite. Anyway. I like fa- you didn't throw him particularly far away. <laughs> but this is why I said you. Clearly you're augmented. Not in that way. So, so what next, next then? The, the boilers? boilers? Uh, I would I would suggest the boilers, yes. Uh, whether or not we need to smoke them out or help them, perhaps. Well, here here's the thing. He's asking that we do a little assassination on them. We now know this. So that, that gives us a little bit of leverage if we if we need to bring it up. <laughs> That's very true. I suppose we should make our way to Strat 11 then. See if we can find this Gasha, was it? Mm. What a wonderful name. Yeah. Now, do we want to go direct or do we want to try and be a little circumspect about this? Because we, we have been wandering around making a bit of a scene. I'm sure we'll be fine. The Emperor's light will guide us, protect. Oh, Even down Sire here. Looks after his own. Have okay. some faith, Wink. <laughs> so, yeah. we'll make... say, say nothing, smile and nod, don't get into trouble. <laughs> We'll make our way towards Strut 11 as we can. Yeah. That's fine. So, if you remember the direct, uh, the, the instructions were to go to the heap, which is built around yeah, Strut 11. And yeah. it, it doesn't take you long to see exactly where such a place would have gotten its name. Um, it looks like a large series of um, Minotaurum um, crates just piled up one on top of each other. The big, sort of like 20 foot containers, all of them, you know, cut apart and uh, used to make this huge pile of sort of a, accommodation and essentially a a sort of a slum built at an angle. Um, uh, and, and looking at it for a moment, uh, Wink, you can probably see like how something like a hive might get started. Just, <laughs> you know, things built on top of other things endlessly and search for somewhere to live. Get, uh, right. Here, their big concern seems to be getting above the pools of acid below. Yeah. I mean, just walking up to it, it's just like, I was like, oh. Yeah, uh, but quite possibly. Um, you make your way in through the heap. Um, are you asking for where you could, might find Gasher, or are you just sort of like heading in there, or what are you doing? Uh, honestly, I'll I'll be looking around to see if there's like anyone who would appear to be of the the Boilers gang, because I'm assuming they're probably quite distinctive with what they would be wearing. Uh, somewhat, yeah. They, they they mostly go for these sort of like boiler suits. Um, but they're not that different from the the labor stuff. But you've gotten a bit of an eye for like there's a certain cut they do to the top, and they, they tend to like you know let them hang around the waist tied off um, with uh, t-shirts to show off like certain tattoos and the like. Quite a few, a lot of them have like a standard labor's elect to down here. Um, but the ones that the the actual gang members seem to have have been like the, the elect to, which is looks a bit like a QR code, effectively like a barcode, um, has been like modified to be the teeth of a skull. Uh, by non um, electu tattoos, you know, just regular ink around them. I uh, shall we? He will be somewhere towards the top of the heap. I can't imagine he'll want to spend his time at the base. Mm, of course, of course. Uh, shall we continue on in and perhaps see if we can see maybe if any of them are a little bit better armed or perhaps even just a little bit better fed? Might be an I'm... easy way to determine rank. Yeah, the gangers seem to be doing fairly okay um, as these things go. You do notice that there's like quite a few people like sitting in the streets outside their homes, essentially, who are definitely ill and coughing and the like, um, and seem to be outside trying to like take what passes for fresh air down here. Um, you do spot that a lot of them seem to have like small vials of medicines and so on around them. Um, and they definitely are medicines. You can actually identify certain manufactorum um, marks on them. Um, that would mean more to you, Cassium, than to uh, anybody else. If you take a look at one, you could probably tell which manufacturer it came from. Um, but you know that no Medicaid is very cheap. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a little uh, look at, as we walk through to see if I can see if they're all the same manufacturer or if they've been garnered from a few different yeah, places. An average awareness test uh, based on site would be fine. So yeah. Plus my, 20. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Not no, about that. no, not we'll today. Just, we'll just move along. 
No, it's too, too much filtered grime down here to be certain. Um, well, yeah, should, should be genuine, might not be. No, hard yeah. to say. I, I, I'm not going to look too closely, just in case it's possibly from one of my shipments. <laughs> uh, a bit too much down here for like what you'd be handling, you'd say. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, you make your way in, inwards, and um, not far past where you see like a lot of those people sort of clustered, and some of that Medicaid being handed out. Uh, you are stopped. A couple of um, who are obviously gangers, uh, large skull-like tattoos, you know, made around the barcodes, step out into the street. One of them makes a sort of a show of turning around to show you um, a stubber um, shoved into her belt. Uh, and then she kind of turns back sideways and just glances at the tree of you. Strange thing. See a tech priest wandering around these parts. She leans in a bit closer. Anything we can help you with? Take me to your leader. Our leader? And who would that be? And what business do you want with them? Our business is our own, but I believe they are called Gasher. Oh, you want to see Gasher, is it? He's a busy man. Very busy is our Gasher. I'm but sure I will be knowing your business. One of the Omnisias faithful. Probably could entertain himself with a cogger for a while. Yeah, he probably could. Well, it's that or, you know, having a certified tech priest down here. We've we've heard that you might be in need of some repairs. I thought that was going somewhere else for a minute. But something a bit sweet. Uh, there's always things looking for repairs. Did, All right. I'll take you to see Gasher. You can leave your any weapons you're carrying outside. We'll see what use we have for your cogger before he leaves. And uh, assuming all goes well. You will be allowed to leave. How does that sound? I'm fine. I'll, I'll follow the group. I'll take out my hand flamer. <laughs> yeah, she tries to hide it, but she makes a sort of a signal to someone um, behind you. Uh, and you do hear sort of like a shuffle of something, you know, people receding back into alleyways and the like. Mm. Yeah. I'll take out the hand flavor and hand, hand a flamer and hand it over. So, yeah. yeah, there's a few LAS pistols and things. Anyone tried to hold yeah. on to a weapon? Uh, I will try to hold on to the smoke grenade. Make a uh, stealth um, conceal test there if you want. Uh, yep. Bear in okay. mind, it was a frag grenade. I do not want you chucking. Oh that. no, no, no! I was. I already had a oh, smoke that's grenade. Right. So I'm, I'm keeping <laughs> the non-lethal one in case we need to run. Smoke. <laughs> uh, so, what test am I making here? Uh, it should be stealth, um, and if you have a specialization, it says stealth um, conceal. Yep. I think it is. Uh, yeah. So I've got uh, stealth. Uh, of 50. Cool. And on the right hand side, let me just check your card. I do have it here. I should stealth conceal, uh, conceal there 55, yep. so, I think. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so go for give it. that a go. That will be a 41. One SL. Yeah, you manage to uh, hide it. You shove it into um, your, like, a small sort of sash that looks more like a, you know, coin punch pouch for a few soldiers. Um, just in case. Yeah, but you, you've got it there, shoved away. Um, handing over like your your pistols and the like. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. I'm handing over enough to make it seem legitimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like that's like for you. I think that's at least two pistols. So that's you know, <laughs> and a las gun actually. So yeah, just look look at that for a bit. It's very military. You wouldn't see a lot of them in, in a hive normally. Oh, you know, uh, I, a, I, a, I trade a bit here, a bit there. Although I do expect that black. Drawer. Don't I, I know the serial number? Ah, uh, it all goes well. You'll get it back. Yeah, don't be worrying. Um, she leads you uh, to um, what looks to be like, you know, so they've carved holes into the big strut here, basically, just exposing the pipe work and so on, and like probably a blasphemy, Cassian, just so you know. <laughs> and um, they, she, she leads you to where like a group of people are working around a, a couple of large pipes. Um, the first thing you notice is that like there's a couple of servitors in one corner who appear to have been bound and blinded. Um, like stuff tied around their heads so they can't see and just tied and chained up to a wall. Um, and as you look, there's a few people who are like waist deep in Prometheum um, and seem to be trying to tap this line. It looks like they're successfully doing so, though, in, in a fairly brutal way. Uh, and they're filling various barrels um, off to one side. Uh, the um, person who has been leading you along walks up to the edge of the pit and shouts down, Oi, Gasher, that tech priest that was walking around finally showed up. They want to talk to you. And um, a fairly bulky looking man, you'd say in his 50s or 60s, it's, it's hard to tell because he's covered in oil and also has lived underneath a manufacturer all his life. So he could be like 
20 um, <laughs> looks up at you all sort of like wiping um, trying to wipe the oil away or the premium away you really only see his eyes like the whites of his eyes and he gives a nod um, and pulls himself up out of the, uh, the the tank starts cleaning off his hands a little bit and looks over the tree view. well what do you want with the boilers I'm Gasher by the way run things around here keep things flowing or uh, and he looks down the pit stop them occasionally we have a proposition for you. Maybe, Maybe speak, speak somewhere, somewhere privately. privately. You want to say it to me? You can say it in front of the rest of us. We believe war is coming to the sub here. I think it's inevitable. The boilers, the eyeless horde, Lord Brant and his Lord Brant. Aye. <laughs> We want to make sure the outcome is acceptable uh, to all, so that we may keep things moving on an even basis above. And what does an acceptable outcome look like to them above? Whatever we tell them is acceptable. Is that so? Let's seek peace. Well, then let me uh, rephrase that. What's acceptable to you, Cogger? Looking around at the destruction that they've laid <laughs> off. Yeah. Trying very hard not to go stop all of this. Currently, we believe the Eyeless Horde are the best posed to take control. However, they are the least acceptable to me and my compatriots. We'd much prefer to see their uh, power base reduced. Perhaps you could be involved in that. And maybe some of this could be rectified as well. This, this is how we pay for everything down here. This is how we siphon off enough solars to keep a few thousand <laughs> people breathing, kicking, fed in Medicaid. We did hear, however, that some of your people are having trouble breathing after a, an unfortunate accident, shall we say? Someone breached a bad pipe. Halogen or the like, I'm told. Bit of it comes out, cells in the lungs, it's not good. It's not good. That's why we need solars worse than ever. Got to pay for the Medicaid to get them right, or at least ease it for them. Well, Which would be a big help if Brandt would pay for the Prometheum he took from us over the last few months. Well, if, if there was a way that... his incense burning and his lamps lit in that great gold you know, abomination he calls a cathedral. Well, if we have a, a certified tech priest here who could possibly look at fixing that for you, if, if of course, you were willing to assist us. Fixing what? The bad pipes that have been breached. I assume they haven't been patched. <laughs> you think we can't patch our own pipes? We breach them and patch them for generations. It's what the boilers do. Okay, okay. Okay. From the information we have heard, it seems this eyeless horde are more dangerous than I assume many of you down here know. They seem to have good backing, as it were, perhaps some kind of benefactor. If, Look, we, were to, if we were to take them out, that could mean more for you and yours. You won't have a hard time talking me into opposing them. Several of our folks went to them for, for succor. You know, to have their hearts put right after something went wrong. And they come back with no eyes or only one. Hard to make a living that way. I don't care what light they think they're seeing. That's not what the emperor wanted for us. Well, we, we have spoken to Lord Brandt and he is open to collaboration and splitting of spoils to perhaps cover his debts. So you want us to for free help you deal with the eyeless horde so that he can pay us with what we earn oh, from that anyway which okay. should be ours by right well i mean there is always the option that if you think you're strong enough although i do see many many unfortunately sick people here look, your look factions at me, at divided me. if we wanted to we could burn this whole place to the ground from here all the way out to strut seven and yet that is not what lord brunt thinks he thinks you're weak at the moment Perhaps you should <laughs> help he? us and show him that Send him over strong. here yourself. Send him down here yourself. I'll show him who's weak. Well, I'll, I'll put I'll... something to you instead. How about this? We'll help you take care of the horde. Okay. You take out Brent. 
an intriguing offer. May I confer with my compatriots? Confer away. Guys, help! I'm drowning! <laughs> oh. You shuffle off to one side where there's like a loud machine. It's like, this, is like drag, this is like Dragon's Den. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe that uh, this Gashia and his boilers probably are stronger than they... Well, then we officially assumed beforehand. I don't like Brandt either, but he seems to have at least some military backing amongst his people. Mm. See, the, the boilers would appear to have access to Medicaid, which, let's be honest, down here, not an easy thing to do. Brant, on the other hand, I'm not sure if he can even pay his staff. So you propose a double cross? Burn Brant in his own building? <laughs> well, I mean... What do you feel about burning a cathedral score? I should ask. Sorry, go on. I'll burn one, <laughs> one room of a cathedral. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, who said anything about burning? All we have to do is, you know, get back in and, uh, you know, take the man himself. Unless he has, like, a large family. Uh, I look to the tech priest and just ask, do you have, do you have any records on the, the Brandt family? Is he the last of his line or does he have a, an extended family that we might also have to, you know... <laughs> If you could get to a cogitator and access point, you could you could uh, um, find that there, out. Yeah, is there likely to be one down here though? Uh, mm. Probably no, no. <laughs> no. no. Back near the maglifts, up and down, there's there probably is some, yeah, but not. Okay, no worries. Not that I'm aware of. Here's I mean, a question well, though, Helza. If Brandt doesn't like the faithful to come inside the cathedral, would remove, removing Brandt not open up the cathedral to more the emperor? And therefore the Omnisire's light. It would. I could be swayed. One small mercy for many mercies. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Quite. In this case, Lord Brandt. <laughs> Any weaponry or anything that Brandt might have access to could then be given to the boilers who seem to be able to handle themselves. Mm. Then they can deal with the eyeless horde themselves. Mm -hmm. Of course we'd aid them in that. Well, uh, it's it's a question of we could have both sides work together until the Eyeless Horde is taken care of. And then both sides have been let dry a little bit and we can sort of make our decision then. The problem with that is Brant will not work with the boilers until Gasher is removed and Gasher won't work with Brant at all. Ah. Uh... Yes. Fair. With those fair. immovable stones, it seemed better to try and shove the one with the word Brant written on it. Well, <laughs> I, I suppose all we, we'd really need to do is go back to Brant with an answer. And, you know, perhaps perhaps Nasher or Gasher could give us a, uh, a little something, a little token that we could use on him. Something to gain his favor before we murdered him, you mean? Well, <laughs> Let's no, not so, beat around the bush. <laughs> no, yeah, well, no, no. It's the, the, the gift is the murder weapon. Perhaps oh. a bomb of some sort? That seems fairly over the top. I don't want to destroy the cathedral, Wink. Well, it, it just has to be a small bomb, and it means we don't have to be there when he dies. Do you know how to work a bomb? <laughs> we have a tech priest. Yeah. I'd much rather we didn't resort to bombing. <laughs> Several reasons. You can't be certain he'll be in the blast when it goes off. You can't be certain other people will not be in the blast when it goes off. People whose time is not yet up. They have more to give to the Omnissiah. I mean, it's, it's that or I'm walking up behind him with my silenced pistol and, you know, one to the base of the skull. Do but he does there. know you, so... <laughs> Might be more amenable to that. I say we follow through. Go and find Brandt, kill him, remove him from the equation, help the boilers, help the masses. Head back over to the edge of the pit then. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Look back down at uh, Gasher. Like, uh, he, he reckoned he was going to have to talk to you. So he's out and he's kind of like cleaned himself off on, on a, as much as you can clean yourself from being covered head to toe in Prometheum. He's um, looking suitably flammable. Mm. <laughs> this, whole, this whole room is shockingly flammable. One spark in here, you're all gone, to be honest. But yeah, um, he looks up at you. 
Well, have you come to some kind of a decision, then? Yes. Uh, we have decided the most expedient thing to do will be to support you in the coming friction. Uh, so we shall uh, deal with Brunt. I don't suppose you told him the same thing, did you? That you were going to support him? No, no, we were coming to negotiate with you to see if we could get you to work together. Unfortunately, that doesn't appear to be an option. It's not. All right. So you're going to support us? What, what? Talk me through that. What do you want from me in return? We will destroy Brandt, remove him from the equation. Anything that he has of use to you, you can use to help us. Get rid of the Isle of Sword that you, by your own admission, do not care for. I certainly don't. Mm. And then we will have stability down here in the sump. You will get everything you want and more. And And then all them up above can go about their lives and pretend we don't exist, just like always. Uh, Not at all, my friend. You see, I am am something of a a go-between, between the higher-ups and the down below. So we could establish perhaps a trade route, that which you need from above for what you produce below. I'm always open to that sort of an arrangement. It, it, it's always good. And of, of, of course, we would, of course, like to take our own share from France estates. Nothing, nothing major, just, That's just something business. for ourselves. That's just business. Yeah, I, I don't want them to think we're just, you know, giving away the house. No. <laughs> well, I, I can have someone talk through the specifics with you, but um, we, we can... We can get almost any amount of Prometheum you might need. Of course, of and course. of course, I, I know you probably have access up there. It's your pipes for siphoning it off, but oh, tr- certainly tr- there are factions up there who don't maybe wouldn't assign you the right amount. Well, I mean, they, they work off quotas up there, and sometimes of course, just not enough. You just need more. Yeah, that's we do oh. a lot of that kind of business. We just. Right. Uh, Greasing the wheels, as it were, reassigning oh, of things. Of course, of course, I understand completely. One request, though. Would you perhaps have any concealed weaponry we might be able to borrow? Concealed weaponry? What are you talking yeah, about? Just, just, you know, something small, deadly. Let's, I don't trust Brandt, and if we're coming back to see him, of course, you disarmed us to come to see you, and now that we've seen you, you might not trust us so much. So just having a little something that can fit in the back pocket. I'm thinking of a favour that could help us gain access to him. A little insurance. No disrespect, but I don't know what made you look around here and I don't know what made you look around here and think this is the house of subtlety. Um, I can I can get you any incendiary you like. I mean, maybe a hip flask full of Prometheum. He points to the open pit of Prometheum. It's like, I'm sure someone has oh, a I'm, I'm, I'm just out of character at that point, think, yeah. thinking. Cassium, you had something to say? You said that you had uh, several people who were still feeling the ill effects. I could take a look at them for you before we leave. I'd also like to speak to the people who went to the Ivis Horde for treatment, if that is possible. When I said they had ailing hearts, I meant it was a spiritual need they have. But uh, I suppose you could say they were ailing, yeah. Uh, happy to have you look at anybody. You uh, don't go cutting anybody up, though, or sticking on any metal parts without any permission, eh, Cogger? The thought never entered my mind. <laughs> go, on, go on, Will. Go over to her, to um, Gasha and put out her hand and be like, shall we have a deal, then? You deal with Brad. We'll take care of the horde. But we'll need to see something up front. Which is to say, Brant, in whatever way you want to make him dead, but I want word gone around. I want to hear it. I want to know it. I want somebody else to confirm it. Once he's out of the picture, we'll pick up the pieces and we'll take care of the Horde. Perfect. Faith in the Emperor is no good if there's no one to give the faith. So yes, we should get rid of him. Interesting to hear you say that about a man who built the only cathedral I've ever seen in my life, but... There's fate, then there's fate, isn't there? All right. Why? All right. He holds out one oily hand. I shall shake it. <laughs> and I don't shakes. make I don't make any means to like wipe it off or anything like that. I just sort of leave it as it is. So I'm not like try, I'm trying to not look like I'm above him. So <laughs> no, that's uh, fine. Your pro instincts that he wouldn't take that well are probably correct. Yeah. <laughs> I will see about getting a, a small 
you know, easily hideable pot of promethium fuel, just in case. Yeah, <laughs> one, one thing they are good at is smuggling promethium. Uh, so yeah, they have many solutions for that kind of thing. All right. Find tar and feather brand. Is that the well, no, 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 it's just <laughs> option of last resort. Quick, drink this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the way they brew it in the 40k universe, they probably wouldn't notice. Yeah. No, they're like, ah, oh, it's a pr- pr- medium from Suck start 14. Diesel. It's always got a nutty sort of flavor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Okay, so um, your weapons are returned to you when you leave. Um, you can have a look at some of the people around here. Um, Cassium, they, they got a, a breath of something really noxious that scarred their lungs. Um, th- th- there are treatments for it. Uh, if they continue to take the type of Medicaid they've been given down here, which is like a, a sort of a regenerative thing, yeah. which you don't have no idea how these people could have afforded. I mean, you probably could surmise it was stolen in some way. Um, that that will help them over the, the course of time, but it's really just sort of making their lives bearable. And um, the best fit, you know, comes to mind immediately, which would be cut, cut them open, replace their weak flesh lungs with much better decent um, iron ones, nice decent iron lungs. Yeah. yeah. Could, that would work much better and be the most expedient. Augmentics aren't cheap either, mm. um, but that that's the only lasting fix they'll get. Okay, but if if it looks like they're taking the correct medication, yeah, I'll, you, I'll leave it at that. You know, if if there's no other uh, alternative I can offer, bar do do you have Medicaid um, a Medicaid human specifically? I do. Yes. Yeah. Make make a test for it there. Oh, I actually passed that on a 50. So one success level. If they could somehow get out of the... So they're not breathing like gas anymore, but everything down here is it's noxious. Fumes. If they could somehow get out of the sump, um, even for like half a day, 12 hours a day, they, they would go from the Medicaid just preserving their lives and the suffering they're in to actually healing over the course of a few weeks or months. Um don't necessarily know how to arrange that but if they get out of the sump like you you would say kind of like four levels above the sump the air there is just the standard imperium level of acrid <laughs> yeah. horrible. that that would you know encourage healing more of an irritant than a rock would it be possible yeah if they could swap out for some of the regular workers would that push them far enough up uh yeah the right workers yeah but i mean Productivity uh, would would be lower because these people uh, aren't going to be very good at work. In that case, I'll leave them as is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I could smuggle some of them up. I, no, I do know no. some back ways. Oh well, no, that's true. But then you then you exploit those back ways. So do you really want? Because once they know them, they'll tell everyone. Well, no, 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 no. Cle- cle- clearly, we blindfold them and we organize. You know, trains, sort it's, of an underground train way. Of some kind. <laughs> Wing gets beaten up by beaten up in the tunnels by boilers. There we go. <laughs> Best type. Right. We should make our way back to Brandt swiftly. Mm. Uh, Wink, use your that silver tang of yours to get us inside, and then we'll deal with him. Uh, yeah. Uh, one thing before we go. Uh, yes. Hit me. Hit you like in the face. In the face. Oh, I've been waiting to do this for weeks. I'll punch, right him, in the the I'll punch him right in the face. <laughs> Donk. Go first. I, I feel like I don't even need to ask. It was just, you didn't pull that blow, probably. It was probably. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't make you test for it if it's willing on yeah. all sides. It is. Um, it is. Yeah, yeah, Wink, you can make a, a willpower test there, though, just, just to see how you how you handle that. Okay. Uh, my will. Uh, it, it, it would, in fact, fortitude I, I, um, would be better. <laughs> All right, oh. uh, fortitude. I'd also uh, love discipline. It's just a not flinch, whichever one you think it is. Uh, I'll go with discipline because it's slightly higher. Yeah, okay, cool. Roll for it there. Uh, oh, you're not going to believe this. Yeah. This is a very unfortunate day. Go on. I, I just rolled 100. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> um, this is a small piece of lore from Wink's background that nobody would have heard about, but Wink had all of his original teeth as his defining <laughs> feature and he's just <laughs> lost that as you kind of like you you go to just take the hit on the jaw but you flinch at the last moment and turn funnily and <laughs> um the uh the zealot score and just like knocks out you know a, a front tooth and two to the back here yeah yeah oh, you, that should sell it and she cracks that, on that yeah, well, I mean, you didn't have to do it that hard i, I wanted like a black eye or something just so that 
you know, he believes the rough people, so I, at least one of us had to get hit. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen me compared to them? Wink, they didn't it needs to be proper. <laughs> oh, well, no, at I, least we can sell the idea that they weren't so happy, and instead of acid, they broke my teeth. It's an extremely authentic looking facial wound. <laughs> I can be that. Well, I mean, I figured we'd have to sell it that they'd roughed us up a bit. Oh, it's sold, it's yeah. sold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else want to take a turn? Yes, One of the boilers is like, uh, uh, well, I wouldn't mind a swing. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's off I right was now. asking to party. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. All right, carry on. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Goes back to stealing the lifeblood of the Omnisire. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. We'll make our way back towards Brant's cathedral, then I guess. Make your way back to the cathedral. Um, you know, as you arrive, you see Brant's guards dragging another body away. Looks like this one tried to get in without paying. Um, Whatever pit they're 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 gonna have to change the pit they're shoving them in because the acid isn't dissolving them fast enough. Can I take a awareness test to try and get an idea of how many of his men are actually around? Kind of. Yeah, thing. you can yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Um, sight. All right. Also, allow intuition. Um, people. If you have it, or just intuition. Uh, um, I don't have intuition, people. But uh, you so just I'll roll just your make, intuition. If you I'll just it's make, oh, cool. Yeah, intuition is better by by five. So uh, that's three degrees of success because I've got uh, eighteen. So there we yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have a good feel for like how you would guard a place like this because you know you grew up in a shrine world and yep. uh, places were being mobbed by pilgrims all the time, and there were there were various guards appointed. Um, you know, you would say he probably has as many as 40 people under arms. Not all of them around here all the time, but you can tell from like the guard posts, the way they're set up and um, various buildings on like sort of like high struts nearby that look like they've been turned over to snipers' nests and the like. This guy can probably command about 40 people under arms. He, he whispers this to the others two, the other two. About 40 or so souls probably guarding him. Try and make this as quiet as possible. So shall we head on in? An audience with the man, yes. Try That's not fine. to get too much blood on the shrine. <laughs> <laughs> He's not exactly um, expecting you, but he, he was expecting you back, so there's no hullabaloo about donations and the like as you arrive back, um, and someone eventually sends you to uh, up to um, see him. He is once again in his um, box uh, at the end. The table is replaced now. He's drinking um, something that looks like an alcohol of some kind. And um, yeah, again, doesn't look like it's the usual effluent tap. It's, like it's been smuggled down from up above. Um, not easy to get that kind of luxury on a forge world. Uh, mm. So who knows where his priorities are when it comes to spending his solars. Um, there are two guards in this room with him. One is that like burly person who took your... Uh, um, list of suggestions earlier um <laughs> cool and another one is a similar guard doesn't look armed more of a a, a sort of a butler you would say than um, a guard wearing again the house prep crest with the um the sort of it's a stag basically though you may not know the name uh before we go into him can i have a word with the guard uh you you can yeah the guard is sort of like is outside yeah is, is leading yeah. you up to him yeah yeah i just i, I want to just have a, a quick like chin wag with him just to see you know what what's it like you know working here do you get paid good does the pay good when it comes nothing wrong with it yeah, don't, 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 no, it's just, yeah, we're just we're, we're just wondering because you know we heard he was having a little bit of money trouble i wouldn't go spread rumors like that if i were you. I just, just what we heard you know i was just I was just looking to see how you guys were doing, you know? Fine. And then just continue on. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah, when we're back. We're in, sorry. sorry, when we're in the room then, um, I want to have a look around quietly without drawing massive attention to myself just to see if if there's anything else in the room. Because presumably he was always sitting at that end of the table, even when he was eating, when he met us the last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, he's been... He's, he's got his yeah. guards, he's... Is there any errant hums or anything that lets me think that there may be anything to defend or protect them? Um, make a um, perception roll, uh, awareness roll, I should say, um, mm -hmm. I'm based on sound hearing, if you, so if you have uh, that, but otherwise just a straight awareness. No, it'll have to be straight awareness. Awareness? No, the, no the normal um, hums of machinery, but like the, the, none of it seems to be a security devices okay uh just as the other two are looking around or talking to him i am just going to like 
gently work my way around the room as if I'm just having a look at what good living looks like. Yeah, I mean, you you get a look at it. Um, it this is this personal box again, a big balcony, sort of like overhanging the cathedral itself. Um, large granite table, several sort of like um, uh, cupboards and the like, which seem to some of them have like glass frontages, so you can see inside. Uh, there's the servo skull that was previously sort of like spouting information about him is nesting in a bundle of like cabling up over one end of the um the the room and and you can see actually looking at it uh, that like its eyes occasionally flick open um and then like like blink rapidly um and then close again which you would recognize as a a sign um uh, Cassium that it's receiving instruction again from someone um and other than that that's more or less the the, the layout um that's as I said one fun. one guard who appears fairly well armed uh yeah. you know large pistol on his hip yeah. the other one is just a butler. That's fine. I, I'm just trying to like casually work my way around the room until I'm like almost behind him and just in the opportune position if things kick off. If you actually go like as you come to almost behind him, the guard sort of like steps a little bit closer. Like he doesn't like you being behind him. I'm I'm just gonna act completely oblivious. Sure. Um, Brant uh, looks at you all, or Trant tr- has Brant looks at you all. It says, "Well." Uh, I hope you've come to some kind of decision. We're ready to uh, share with me who it is you represent. I'm looking forward to discussing we, our options further. Yeah, we, we met, met the leader of the, the borders. borders. He sort of looks over his shoulders at uh, your injured face, Wink, and it's like, <laughs> I, just, I give him like a, a snaggle to smile. Mm, a charming individual, as I recall, yes. He doesn't seem to be as badly affected as you led us to believe. Well, they would look try to look strong in front of you, wouldn't they? Yes. yes. The calculations have been made. We have come to a conclusion. The summation of which means you have to die. i just pull out my last gun. <laughs> oh, I, mean, <laughs> I mean, this is why I was working behind him, so hearing that, my one's coming up as well. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's down to initiatives then, because the guard yeah. was a little bit suspicious. So um, we're using the alternate initiative rules, which means you just roll a d10 and add your initiative to it. Oh, okay. The, the default for I am is you can just um, go with what's written there, but I like a little bit of random. Uh, cool, I got 10 in total then. Okay, I rolled a 2, which puts me on a 7. Because it's the 10s uh, of the initiative that you use, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's just a D10. So yeah, you're, yeah. you're still showing off. Though. I got six. Uh, I got uh, well with six. That'll be a thirteen for me if we're adding the initiatives oh, together. Yeah. yeah, you should be add, uh, roll a D10 and add your initiative score. So I don't think it could be six, right? Uh, unless you have forty-five, so four. Uh, oh, yes. No, so uh, your your initiative is on the back. It's actually on your the second bonus, bonus. Your agility bonus. Oh, okay. it, sh- it should be six or seven, I think, for all. Oh, that is yes. That's not as bad. Not too bad. Yeah, um, with it. yeah. You are all acting first, uh, but beforehand. So if you if you want to do whatever it is you're about to do to this man um, before his uh, I, I bodyguard think reacts, cool, I think the cool guy who did the cool line should go first. I think he definitely so. should. Basically, <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of yeah. like no one is faster Even, than you on the draw yeah, is the main yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, on the other side of this, uh, yeah, go for it. So he's he's a, he's a, a completely like sort of flat footed as it were target. So it's an average test plus twenty to that. Um, so go ahead and roll to hit. Yeah, I will not be calling my shot. Where are we? Uh, yeah. Forty. <laughs> I will also say, by the way, point blank. It's a period, get a bonus. Yeah. So about that, superiority is something that you have in IM, which is where you like done the legwork you can gain a point of superiority before the fight even begins so you guys case the room check to everyone's armaments and guy in here with your weapons that's worth a point of superiority which means you can add plus one sl to one roll that you make on each of your turns um which would normally be an attack that you could save it for a dodge or something if you wanted uh to to do that um, do you announce before you roll you do need to say what you're going to apply it to yeah I- I'll apply it to this then because and you'll get, yeah, you're, you're up to six. You're up to sixty, I think, aren't you? Because you got the plus twenty on this as well. Is that the? So it, yeah, the plus twenty applies to your skill, and then plus yeah, one yeah. SL is just on okay. onto the roll. Yeah, it's yeah. effectively a plus thirty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's see if I miss this then. Go for it. <laughs> no, sixty on the button. So one. One, one SL. One cool. SL. All right. And you were going for. A headshot, oh. right? Which I legitimately rolled a one on the D10 for hit location. Um, oh, well, that's nice. So you definitely hit him in the head. 
uh, he's not armored head. He does not have. Uh, so the damage for a last pistol, I think, is four. Uh, five and plus one for the SL. Yeah, you raise the last gun, pull the trigger, um, and like blast him full on. You, you take a chunk piece out of his jaw and burn a huge hole in the side of his face. Um, the scream that he tries to utter is absolutely garbled and terrific as he stumbles back away from you, um, desperately trying to uh, get some kind of distance, even as the pain is just like overwhelming him. He's not down, though. Um, there's two more actions, though, I think, before anyone else does anything. So if think you were highest uh, wink. So yeah, so uh, yeah. I mean, I, I am just about behind him. So yeah, I think you get the same plus 20 to the, the test. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, for my shooting, where is my shooting? Should be range one handed for the so pistol. Yeah, uh, a range pistol, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so test of forty, so that's going to go to a sixty. Yeah, and you um, plus one SL to this if you want to use your I will. superiority. Yeah, I will. So sixty or better. Uh, that will be a thirty flat. 30 flat. So that's three SL plus one for the uh, having oh, oh. the superiority. Um, yeah. Damage of six. Damage of six brings it up to uh, 10. And you're going to silence. It was actually the correct pistol for this, I think. Yeah, you go for the headshot, um, but like as he's falling, you have to adjust your aim a little bit. So you put around in his chest. Uh, the, the report is is huge. Um, or no, sorry, silence, the exact opposite of yeah, what so I said. Uh, which yeah, um, but there's a spray of blood um, and the life goes out of him as he crumbles onto the ground. He did not bring armor to this meeting. Um, he thought he was, uh, he was, his confidence got the better of him. And um, mm-hmm. down he goes. Uh, in a, and the blood starts pooling um, out of him almost immediately. And um, the bodyguard is still looks like he's drawing, though. I am nothing if not efficient. Um... Rather than trying to negotiate with this man, I'll try and burn him, I guess. <laughs> so I'll level my hand flamer at the bodyguard, not the butler. The butler can live. <laughs> the butler can live. <laughs> All right. It's, it's what the butler thought. So I'll try and flame the. Uh, the uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it. <clears throat> uh, so it would be 40 normally. Uh, are we getting a bonus for this or is it just a. I, I know he was nervous enough so it's, it's okay, just a straight it's up 40 flat. yeah i'll use my plus sl on it though so go for we'll it it goes 27 so that's two degrees of success and then one for the extra one so that's uh so that's three sl on that uh, cool and the damage on a flamer is, is seven seven yeah. which is 10 um and it inflicts the ablaze condition um which is bad if you're on fire <laughs> Yeah, there's a gout of flame that that grips him. Um, he's not actually down, but his commitment to bodyguarding the dead man is less than his desire to live. Uh, one second. <laughs> yeah. The autogun clatters to the ground. Um, there's a scream as he tries to like bat the fire away from his face, and he pitches himself over the edge of the balcony to try and get away from the gouts of Prometheum that are spraying across him um, and screams all the way down. You hear a few shouts and muffled cries from below. The butler sort of looks at you all and says, I I, I didn't see anything. Oh, it's it's okay. We, we're going to need someone to run this place. That might be you. Uh, uh, if you say so, he puts his hands up. Great. Um, so call all the security forces, tell them the boss Oh, they're is dead. coming. Don't worry about that. The security forces are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm telling him to call them, tell them that he's dead so they're not getting paid for this. Um, roll your intimidation, I think, is the, which is, um, if I'm not mistaken, one second now. It would have threatened you with your paycheck. <laughs> yeah, it's presence, uh, presence, and then intimidation, if you have that, that's because otherwise just roll your presence. Uh, it's just my presence, so it's a straight I think you can have advantage on this because you just burn two, a man to death in front of him. So <laughs> what advantage means is it's it's the other kind of bonus than I am. Um, roll your dice, and if you want, say you get a, a 51, if you wish, you can reverse that to a 15, reverse the digits, oh. if oh, that's, that's better nice. for you. Okay. Uh, so let's see. We've got a seven and a four. So yeah, I'll go with 47. Yeah. Um, what's your... Which is still uh, over slightly. It was 40. 
Uh, I was after. Can, you can spend a point of fate to re-roll it if you want. Yeah. So, uh, okay, will I re-roll both or just one? Uh, you Well, it's all the one roll, if you so know it's what I mean. So it's a D100, so you just so so re-roll the okay, D100. Okay, I will re-roll. That will be a 35? Yeah, do that. that sounds like that'll do it. Um, yeah, he he heads outside and starts, you know, shouting, uh, the Lord is dead, Chanto's dead. Um, he's been killed, so hold, so hold. Um, you do hear security flooding into the, the hallway outside, though, um, and the like. This guy is obviously trying to be like, oh, they, they wish to deal. His, his assassins remain. I, um, but, like, there's definitely people coming from the door who don't seem to be listening to that, but you do hear some of the clatter of footsteps sort of slow. Meanwhile... Scorn's going to bend down over the body of um, of of Tantor and try and see if there's anything like incredibly identifiable on him. Signet would, rings are always good, like signet rings, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, he definitely has that kind of thing. Yeah, right. Um, Rip them all off the body. I mean, uh, so that I can display them. I mean, <laughs> we 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 could literally just hang him out the box. Yeah, but he's heavy. Oh, no. <laughs> If you and don't also, bar the door in the next few moments, someone's going to be in here. Someone's going to be in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Can we bar you then? I'm um, going to turn my voice up, if that's doable, to, you know, shout levels. I think a, a vox implant for a voice could be a loud hailer, yeah. Yeah. Or you borrow the fanatics one. <laughs> Stop yeah. where you are. This was done under the directive of one of the. Forge Lords of the Spire. Oh. You we will not be harmed if you allow us to leave this place. And in fact, we will require your assistance in running of the cathedral in the future. Roll your presence. Meanwhile, I'm still robbing the body. I, yeah. <laughs> 16. Oh. My presence is... More than 16, I'm sure. More than 16. 35. So, just still only one one degree of success. Oh well. Yeah. Um, a couple of people have uh, arrived in the door in 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 the house house tranters um, gear. Auto guns are raised and pointed at you, but nobody pulls a trigger. Eventually, one more senior looking one steps forward. And mm-hmm. um, where are your guns raised and pointing, or are you kind of no. like? No, I mean, my, just mine's at my side. I'm, I'm but just as they walk in, I will covertly cock the hammer. Standing at the side of the balcony, just looking down on them, like all tech priests should be, above watching the masses. Gorn will, around. Gorn will stand up and um, uh, says, How dare you raise those weapons in, the ne- in this house of the emperor? We have done his holy work in this holy place. Keep that tongue in her. your head, Zalator. I'll cut it out myself. The last Again, sign I'm... of House Trantor is dead. House Brandt is dead on this ground. And you tell me a Forge Lord ordered it. Which one? Name them. Show me the elect two. You think we're ignorant down here? We are not that ignorant. You have no power to command me to tell you anything. I wouldn't tell Lord Brandt you had sent us. And when we seen the concession of this place and how he was running it. I might not have the power to order much, but and he gestures over his shoulder at um, someone who's like, holding the gun up quite a bit. I have the caliber to order it. Okay, I'm going to step up at this point and go, gentlemen, gentlemen, calm down, calm down. Now, as we all know, your your scion was paying you. You're no longer getting paid to to do this. Do you think we there's no offering... honor down here? Do you think there's no loyalty? That's Back in your more... seat, vagabond. Well, he, here's the thing. Without him to, well, you can avenge him. Get but back in your means... seat or I'll put you in it. Okay, I'm having just about enough of this guy. I'm going to lift the gun and plant one on his head. <laughs> you just pop one off? Yeah. Okay. And gets peppered by the last gunfire. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't seem like we're going to be fit to talk to him, so I think it's, you know, you do with it like you do in the fifth element. Who's the leader of the Bangalores? Now who's the leader of the Bangalores? <laughs> just keep shooting until it gets done. <laughs> who's yeah, next yeah. in rank? <laughs> yeah. So basically, straight for him, gun up. Back. That's grand. I mean, he's pro- he's <coughs> not unawares here, so he's yeah, going to try and get out of the way of this. Yeah, okay. So yeah, go for it. Rotate. Okay. Uh, so I'm looking at. I tell you, I got a sixteen. Oh, that will be oh, that's bad. That's a sixty-eight. 
Yeah. You raise <clears throat> the gun to do that. He's inside your guard surprisingly quick. He's got a hand up and suddenly you feel uh, the barrel of a gun in your stomach. Uh-oh. And yours goes off, hits the ceiling. That'll help. The next one to put their finger on a trigger will be me. No matter how fast any of you think you are. Who ordered this? I will. Discreetly gesture to him as if I'm not going to show anybody else in the room. All right. He sort of like keeps his gun in your stomach wink and like circles around <laughs> to see this. <laughs> yep. Very gingerly shown the back of my wrist where the tattoo is. Yeah. He looks at it for a moment um, and you see like an augmented eye in his skull sort of twist and scan over it. And he sighs and like a lot of the fight seems to go out of him. Well, it was a good gig while it lasted. There is no reason why it cannot continue to be a good gig. This cathedral, it has been built at great expense, yet nobody is inside it. If you were to lower the donations, set up services that the masses could come to hear about the emperor on a regular basis, then there's no reason why you and your men could not continue to be paid for the upkeep and protection of this cathedral. Brandt was a pompous man, but his confidence was what held things together. We'll give it a try, but I have my doubts. Well, the fact that we are all alive means I assume your lord does not wish any more of us dead. It is simply you go a means your way. to an end. You go your way, and he pulls the gun out of your stomach, Wink, and we'll go ours. May the other side protect you. And the emperor. <laughs> I will go over to that uh, shelf that had the servo on it. Yeah. And take that down and yeah. interface with it because as I you, don't know what it was doing. It was you, recording you, us. You, you plug it out and you, uh, it, its mouth kind of opens and the little box speaker inside goes, Lord Trantor Blant heads from a long s- series of families that, who that's fine. fire died in, in fire and, and flame and death. <laughs> I just want to make sure that it doesn't have a record of us or what happened in here. So I'll check it for that. Does it seem like any nature. of the individuals, the guards that are here, are paying that much attention to the fact that Brandt's body's just there? Are they coming over to look at it or are they? they a few people are looking at it. Yeah, it looks like they, they are thinking of uh, just they, they seem to have had some respect for the man, mm. despite it all. So dragging him out by his coat is probably not the most. <laughs> well, well, hang on, hang on. We we could have them take him out because I'm I'm sure there is a burial procedure down here to bury him quite publicly to lay the man to rest. I, I'm just going to take my little servo skull and just footer with it. Uh, yeah, and just hold it up oh, and yeah, take a hollow yeah. picture of him yeah, with yeah. it, <laughs> and then just set it to follow me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's fine. You can do all that. Um, right. Your investigations find that it was indeed recording um, <laughs> what was being seen here, and it had a, a protocol embedded in it to ascend the spire and deliver that data to somebody unnamed. I'll see if I can get whatever location information. Yeah, you can get a location, off, but... an otherwise mundane um, intersection of some hallways on the fifth level above, above the sun. We, we can possibly pass otherwise... that to our lord. Later. Otherwise, we can head off then. Yeah, we don't uh, need the body. Yeah. So, well, yeah. unless the, is there perhaps an armory or something within the templum? Let's not uh, push our luck. <laughs> <laughs> well, what if if they're going their way, we're going ours. Our way could be to the armory. I think they might. Just leave. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's not I, I, I will have this a very place quick, anymore. <laughs> I will have a very quick scout around the room for anything valuable. The, um, I, I, I shove the rings into his hand and say, this will do. <laughs> okay, <fair enough. laughs> that, that, that's fine. The servo skull was probably the most valuable thing in here. Though you right. do um, get, you do take a, a glass bottle of something called distilled water uh, that is <laughs> sitting to one side. Um, that, that, that will probably help with the pain in my jaw. Yeah, cool. Uh, great. 
Um, and you make your way outside, um, leaving this uh, terror and, 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 and horror behind you. Um, although maybe you don't feel that way about it. Um, some some people might. Uh, the victims, for example. Um, <laughs> yeah, you get your outside. Um, so we're kind of coming towards the end mm. of our uh, sort of session here. So I can give you a little summary of how things go and you can tell me what you do if you'd like. Mm. Mm. Um, cool. So I, I assume you are letting the boilers know that... Uh, oh, yes. Well, Take the proof via the servo skull image mm. to Gasher and yeah. uh, set him on his way. Yeah, um, Gasher's surprised you were as good as your word, um, but he makes a point of claiming that he is always as good as his. And once he's verified via sources such as someone he knows having mm. seen the body and the like, you know, that mm. once he's heard the rumors and it's not just a cogger trickery and he's really dead, um, he holds up his hand of the bargain. And the following night, uh, there's a Prometheum a rupture in a Prometheum line um, high up above the Eyeless Horde's cathedral, which they had built into the edge of the uh, side of one of these struts. Um, and the congregation goes up in flames. Um, though a- apparently a handful escaped, um, claiming that they had seen the emperor um, in his feathered glory and he had warned them about what was to come. Uh, so they are apparently still somewhere in the hive, uh, having claimed or in the within the manufactorum, um, and claiming that someday will, that they'll have their vengeance and the emperor will be served. The the boilers are, as I said, as good as their word. They do step up their Prometheum thievery, which actually is noticed up above as like a 03 percent drop um, in deliveries, but it's not outside of what's manageable, and a lot of it does seem to come back up um, via you know, the, the boilers themselves who profit mightily from it. They're, they're black marketry. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the cathedral is stripped of about 40% of the gold that covered it um, before some of the, the boilers and a few others make a point of actually um, re-establishing it as a sort of functioning cathedral along with the help of a, a couple of ecclesiarchy um, missionaries, um, not the ones who were killed uh, by <laughs> the Island Sword earlier. Um, and yeah, so it goes. Uh, word does get back to Talek the Reticulator that his name was invoked and has been associated with this. Um, however, he understands the necessity and um, does not feel that punishment is required at this juncture, but will bear it in mind for another. It doesn't get turned into a servitor. <laughs> yeah, and well, see, here is the problem. I had all my original teeth. First it's a teeth, then it's a finger, then it's an eye, then it's a leg. Yeah. The next thing you know is servitor time. You heard it here. It was a, a, a crown like is the first, priest. the first, the first step to becoming a, a tech priest at, is having, having least, crowns put in your teeth. You know, at, I mean, you said I have a silver tongue. Well, now I've got the silver smile. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's fine and, and telling. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll leave it there. So um, what do you reckon? Right, really enjoyed, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. I love the fact that it's more focused on the narrative side of things than it is just yeah. go in, rock in to SBSL and start blowing up gene stealers. Yeah, that is the vibe. Um, you know, and from the stat block in the book, by the way, one gene stealer would have wrecked you all. Um, <laughs> yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 as as in as intended. Um, but yeah, no, it's 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 something that's really exciting. I love that narrative side of things as well. So been delighted to work on it, and this was really enjoyable. Um. Yeah. I'll have you know that in, in play testing um the, the of this scenario, the group went with Brant. They were like, Yeah, he's oh. the guy. But they did visit the Eyeless Horde for a while. They were like, after talking to the other two, maybe the Eyeless Horde just have bad PR and we'll go and see what they're like. <laughs> it's it's yeah. one of those, it's the first step into what could be a much larger campaign because when mm. you're down here, mm. obviously we've got Lord Brant and his cathedral perfect for Helza. Uh the fact that Gasher and Co and the Boilers are ripping off so much Promethean. Probably I should have been more forceful against that, but obviously we're time constrained here. Yeah, um, it feels yeah. like Brant would be the natural one to end up with. Um, uh, see, I but... I think the way things turned out with with Wix actually beginning to get you know a little bit more into the black market, you know that. For later campaign games, that could be a lot of fun and a lot of use. Lots of possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and that's the great thing about role playing games in general. Uh, there yeah. you have it, folks. Uh, Imperium Maledictum. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, darker side at the forty first millennium. <laughs> the dark, the even dark side. The evil darker side. Uh, there is no hope this far down below the spires. 
Let us know what you think below. Until next time, bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.